What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Running With Friends. This is now episode five. I'm super excited about today's guest, but before I introduce him, I just want to say shout out to Track and Friends. They just dropped some new designs today, so make sure you guys go on the link tree on my bio and go check them out. They, they're going to be dropping new designs every couple of weeks, so you guys make sure you keep checking them out. And now, without further ado, I think the, the correct way to introduce this man is it's A Brad in the building, the one and only <laughs> Soda Boy ETSU standout, Adam Brad Mueller. How's it going, brother? Good, dude. I'm glad, glad to be on. Hey, man, let's get right into it. So, first thing, I want to start this off with when did you start running and why did you start running? Um, I probably, I mean, officially, like, I started taking running seriously about my freshman year of college. I mean, freshman year of high school. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah. I, yeah. I was about to say, damn, bro, what do you mean? So, you were smacking <laughs> people in high school and when you were taking it seriously? Yeah, no, I, no I, uh, I mean, I always had ADHD and I was, like, just running around the house as a kid. And, like, the big joke was, like, they'd be, like, oh, like, if we're ever, like, out somewhere, like, oh, I left something back there. Like, Adam, go run. I'll, I'll, I'll time you. And so I was always doing goofy stuff like that. I went out for track in middle school because, like, I was, like, I always run. And then we ended up running pretty well. Like, I ran, like, 458 in eighth grade. And then I actually ran 458 and got third at my county meet. Yes, sir. And, yeah, I got third. And – uh but yeah, it was kind of funny. Shout out Warren Gahalas and Brandon Drum. <laughs> but yeah, and then I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. And at that point, I was playing football and basketball. So, uh, you know, my sister actually ended up like, luckily, she was like best friends with the captain of, uh, uh, of the cross country team at Sarasota, which FGCU connection, Cortland Bernard. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know that guy. Good guy. <laughs> But yeah, and so I went out at that point, I was going to like play football and run track. And then I met him and I went to practice and met all the guys and I was hooked. Like I started running. I got dropped every run going into my freshman year all, all, <laughs> the whole summer. But I was hooked. And then, you know, it just all went from there. Yeah. So I want to talk, I want to talk about your senior season, but before we get into that, I want to talk about how we met because I want people to know how we met. <laughs> so man, it's, cr it's crazy how we met because we didn't really like meet in person until like maybe like months after we had already been like communicating and talking and we were already friends. So basically Adam, I mean, we'll talk about this a later on, but like you just, you had just came off winning states for cross country. And then obviously the week after the week after that was the FACA senior all-star meet, which tops top like eight seniors from the four different regions get invited. And then obviously a lot of like the top guys like yourself, I mean, who else? Jo jo Jordan Armstrong, Stephen Cross, like Josh Jakes. Like a lot of you guys declined your invitation because you guys were getting ready for two weeks out, which was the Foot Locker qualifier, trying to make it to Foot Locker Nationals. So obviously a lot of like the low tier guys, I, I joke like me, Bobo, Rob, like we kind of like made it in there. And then we went out there, we had fun. What? Which, and we started this group chat called FACA Gang, which to this day is still alive somehow, just because that's just like the, the group and how close we got. We started this group chat FACA Gang, and like we were like texting and it all the time and stuff like that. And then somehow, even though you weren't at the meet, you got added to the chat. And then from there, it was kind of like, oh, like Adam, Adam, like we started talking to you. We would talk, we would joke around in the chat. And then two weeks after, it was Full Logger, Nat, Full Logger Invitational to try to make it to Foot Logger Nationals. You're there. All the top guys are there. The guys that kind of were at the FACA also me were there as well. We're running the senior race. And I remember to this day, you, you had just finished your race. You finished 12, almost were two spots away from making it. And you, me, Rob, Bobo, Joel, John, we're all at the line, like Andrew. We're all at the line getting ready for a race. And you run after pretty much fresh off your race. And you're like, yo, good luck, boys. Good luck, boys. And I, in my head, I'm like, yo, that's like, that's Adam Bradmuller state champ say, saying good luck to me. Like, that's, that's tight, bro. Like, that's crazy. And I feel like from there, like, just our friendship, like, we kept getting closer and closer. And, like, we just kept talking. And, like, it's crazy because, like, if you told me in 2016 that state champ Adam Bradmuller was going to be one of my closest friends, I would have I been like, no way. And, like, look at us now. Like, it's just insane. Yeah, that's the craziest stuff is, like, 
I mean, we're obviously going to get on this, but that group chat. First of all, when I talked to you guys at Full Locker, I wasn't even in the group chat yet. Yeah. Oh, you guys yeah. All okay. had yes. And I was like, and I walked up. I was like, oh, hell yeah. And so I, I, I dapped you guys up, and I knew Rob at that point. And I think it was like, I might have honestly been on my way back from Foot Locker. Rob texted me. He's like, dude, do you have an iPhone? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I actually just got one. made the switch. And he added me in the group chat. And uh, yeah, that, it went from there. But that's crazy because, I mean, in high school, I don't really talk to people I went to high school with anymore. Like the only the people I talk to on a consistent basis are the people I met through running. And it's like mainly that back. Yeah, like, I, I, I relate, dude. Like, I, I, I mean, I have like one or two friends from like my high school that weren't runners. But like, and even like, my teammates who were like my teammates in high school, I barely even talked to them. Like I mostly talked to like pretty much those faggot guys like you, Rob, uh, Bobo, Andrew, like just people I've met through running, which is like insane. Like that's just the beauty of the sport that you get to meet people and get close to people, even though you're competitors and you compete against each other. Like there's that mutual respect on and off the course, which is great. Mm -hmm. And the reason actually I knew your name, I remember seeing your name and results and stuff. But like really where your name stood out to me was the uh the Florida Runners discussion board. Oh, I was always on those, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you were always posting replying back to coaches and like you were trolling the coaches, coaches would always get real upset. And I remember I was always reading those laughing. Oh yeah, I would always be on the discussion boards trolling. Like whenever they would do like the state meet predictions, I would always be like submitting predictions and stuff like that. Dude, I was a huge FO Runners geek. It was so funny. But yeah, dude, no, like so, like, yeah, to, like, get back onto your senior year, obviously, uh, 2016, Sarasota makes the switch from 3A to 4A. So, it was your first year in 4A, right? Am I correct? First year in 4A. Yeah, first year in 4A, and you just storm and win, win the state meet, which, to me, that race is crazy because I actually medal. I, I, I podium at that race. I finished eighth place. And I feel like the reason I – the only reason I podium was because the year before, uh, Carlin Berryhill, Josh Jakes, junior year, took it out super strong they i mean there was like the top four guys that that year in 4a all ran on their 15 20 so like i feel like the following year josh and carlin come back so i feel like everyone's kind of waiting for them to like make the move but they never did so then it was like a huge pack I'm, i mean i'm sure you remember it was like we were like 15 deep going up the wall for like going into the last straightaway so then it kind of played out perfectly for guys with like great kicks like yourself i mean justin pacifico finished second in that race which a lot of people don't consider Justin a cross-country guy, but, I mean, he was definitely a good cross-country guy in high school. Like, can't mm -hmm. take that away from him. But he had a great kick, like, stuff like that. So then me – I remember I remember that race, like, it was yesterday. Like, me going up the wall, I look to my left. I see Carlin Berryhill, Josh Jakes. I look to my right. I see Adam Bradmuller, Jordan Armstrong. And I'm like, holy shit, like, am I really doing this? <laughs> and I, like, just – it was kind of like once we got up that wall, it's like just kick as hard as I can to get that podium. And it was it was an exciting race. So, like. Just talk to me about just getting that state title in, in your first year in 4A. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was, that was super exciting. And going into that race, I was crazy nervous. I've never been more nervous in my life than I was going into that race. Like, I was legitimately, I was shaking before. I was shaking. I was sitting there, like, tying my spikes up. And I was like, I didn't even know what to do with myself. And I looked up, and my dad had just got to the course, and he was walking up. And I literally was like, Dropped, I dropped everything. I got up and hugged my dad, and I was like, all right, now I'm ready. Like, Because all I wanted to do in high school was win state. Because, I mean, I was one of those guys that kind of from freshman year was, like, one of the faster guys. Like, I ran, like, 15.30 my sophomore year. And I was hurt my junior year, and obviously, like, I wasn't going to beat Suki or anything like that. <laughs> but I was like, this is my last chance to win cross-country state. And then it was funny because we went out ridiculously slow. I feel like we had a lot of guys that were good, but we didn't have like a Suki Colts or like a Tyler Bennett that was just going to crank the first mile. Yeah. And so like, I remember we were just like went through like five flat the first mile and I was looking around and then it really, nothing really took off. We were in that big pack the whole time. Yeah. Like it like never like unfolded really until yeah. like the last like 600, 800 meters. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, I remember. And then I saw Josh take the lead with like, right before the wall and then Carlin got behind them and I was like all right well there it is and then uh, I went right behind them and we were just in a straight line you guys must have just been packed up right behind me but I was kind of like focused forward I had no idea what was going on yeah, behind me you had that tunnel and vision I, I got to the top of the wall it was like I know Carlin had dropped off a little bit and it was me and Josh and I, I was just like in my mind like I was like 
I did it. Like I knew, like I knew yeah. there was no, I knew no one was gonna outkick me. I was like, if you're gonna beat me, you gotta, you gotta drop me. No one like it was like a perfect. It was set up for me perfectly. Like I, I remember looking around with like 600 to go. Like this, like I felt like they gave it to me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like this. Baby. And then when I made the push with 400 to go, Josh stopped and threw up. Yep. And at that point, at that point we were like kind of shoulder to shoulder, like moving. And we had dropped everyone, and he. He, he stopped and then I looked over my shoulder and I was like all alone. And the last 400 meters is just me running, going like in my mind, just freaking out. Like, holy shit, I, I just did it. it that, boy, that boy threw up the wands and finished like that. I remember that. That shows that dope ass picture. <laughs> yeah. And you always dream because it's like you're always looking like all right, who's coming over that hill, like all the all the spectators. And it's pretty cool, like knowing that like you're going to crest that hill and everyone's going to be out there watching you go down the finish shoot. Yeah, so I kind of was able to uh, to get like a little victory. I mean, not like I was jogging, but victory run into the to the shoot. Yeah, no, no, it's definitely definitely a, a great race for you. And then, obviously, you fast forward to track season, and you also win the thirty two hundred at the mm -hmm. state meet. Um, that was another incredible race. I I wasn't in that one. You know, I wasn't very fast on the track, especially in my region and district was loaded, so I never made it out to the, to the state meet, but. I, I did go out to watch just because, like, I, my friend John was out there and, like, he qualified in the mile, in the two mile. And, like, just how, all you guys were out there. So, like, I was like, man, this would be – this is my last year in high school. Like, this would be fun just to go out and watch. So, obviously, that was another race that kind of played out the same way as cross country. Went out super slow. Went out five flat. I mean, I remember being in the stands and I'm like, bro, you, they, you guys went out five flat and there was guys from, like, regions that, like – that those guys that got in with, like, ten flats – that were like struggling to keep up with you guys at five fly. And I'm sitting in the sand. I was like, bro, I could have, I could have been keeping up with them. Like what the hell? Yeah. And there's that like was, there's drop off at lap three. Yes, dude. Run. But yeah, that's another race that kind of like played out to like a kick as well, where like, I feel like the year before, I don't, I don't remember who won it the year before, but like, I feel like everyone was kind of waiting for the, for that one guy to make the move and nobody yeah. made that move. So then it kind of played out to where it was like you, Rob, Carlin and those Lyman guys, like the last pretty much like 600 meters just booking it to see who, who who pretty much had the best kick and then you turn it up at the tur at the 200 and then you never look back and then you kind of took a glance back with like maybe 50 meters to go and then you see my, our boy Rob there you guys went one two that that was pretty pretty special Tell, talk to me about that race yeah I mean to be honest that's still probably I mean besides my 5k PR that is that's probably my second favorite moment in in my running career because we were, I mean, me and Rob were really good friends. I used to drive up to Tampa, hang out with him. He'd come down. And so, like, we were good friends at that point. And neither of us had a teammate in the race. And it was, like, that race didn't start until, like, 10 o'clock. And so he, he was staying under my tent because his team didn't have a tent. And so we were hanging out all day. And then when we warmed up, we warmed up together. It was like we were teammates. And we were, like, I was telling him, like, all right, I'm going to make a move. I wanted to go. Like, I was letting him know what I wanted to do. And he was all about it. And so, like, going into that 300, like, going in 300 left, there was a pack of six of us. And then Rob took the lead, and then I was off the shoulder. And so, yeah, go, coming through the finish shoot or finish line, I was, like, looking over my shoulder, and I saw it was Rob. I was losing my mind. It was the coolest experience ever. It was, like, me and one of my best friends going one two, And then looking up, and the whole group chat, the whole Facky gang is, like, on the fence, losing their mind. Hey, bro, was, bro. Was, like, ah. <laughs> like, going yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we got that. Me and Rob got that bromance picture. Uh, oh, they had the finish line and odds over there. Todd and Justin Fletcher were interviewing at the end. <laughs> good times, good times. So then, obviously, I mean, you have some stellar times, stellar right, stellar races, right. stellar career in, in high school, which led you to run at the D1 level, and you decided to go to Eastern Tennessee University. Why? Why ATSU? Um, so the, uh, I'm not sure if you know who coach cook is, but he coached like Shalane Flanagan, Leo Manzano and like that training group back in the day. And, uh, he funny, he actually coached my coach right now. My coach right now ran for him in high school. So coach cook is in Sarasota, lives in Sarasota, he retired there. And, uh, the doctor he used for his like for his team lives in Sarasota and would help out with with Sarasota High, so like, and I was I mean, he was like a really big influence on me like the doctor who was our assistant coach, shout out Dr. King, um, but 
Yeah. And so he was like, when you to run in the times I was like, it was good, but I'm not going to go to a power five school on a full ride. And I just kind of want a scholarship money. And he was like, well, we got this, got this team up at ETSU. Um, like going mid major is the way to go. The coach Watts, the, who was yes, like kind of the connection. Mid major. He, uh, he is, he's super successful. He's had, he's coached multiple Olympians. Uh, he coached, uh, fam Aletti, coached, uh, Tony Perilla. And so he's, co he's coached a lot of guys. And so I was like, well, I mean, I can kind of get that mid-major scholarship money and still run for someone really good. And we kind of had a big recruiting class. So it worked out pretty well. I'm happy where I am now. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, so far at ETSU, you've had a quite the career as well. I mean, your cross-country times, um, you just – I feel like every year you've gotten better – both cross country and track, but you've also dealt with some injuries while you're there. And you, what well, you've registered, you just got off a of registered season, correct? Uh, yeah, registered at indoor and then grown a year outdoor, I guess. Yeah. So talk to me about some of those injuries and how like they've like helped you like get better as a runner. Cause sometimes like people see injuries and they're like, oh, like they're bad. But like, I feel like it's all about perspective. And if, if you like, I mean, I have mad respect for you because I know when you were injured, like, I mean, I talk about it with the boys I train with, like, Joey, and they're like, dude, you were, like, biking and swimming like crazy. Like, to have that dedication, that knowing that you're injured, that you can't run, but still have the dedication to go out and bike a shit ton of miles. Like, bro, you would send me snaps. Like, you were always at the pool swimming. Like, just that dedication, like, like obviously, like, you, it tra it will tra you, you knew that once, like, you got back from injury that it was going to translate and it was going to pay off. So just talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, so I really didn't get injured too much early, but junior year cross country, I had I had this – my knee flare up. Like, I was running, like, 85-mile weeks consistently. And uh, I just finished a run one time. I was like, Coach, my knee feels weird. And he was like, oh, it's kind of swollen. And I went to the training room, and they were like, yeah, it's, it's – uh, I had like tendonitis and then it was like all sorts of issues with it and basically overuse. And I haven't really been able to get above 70 miles in a week since then. And so I've kind of had to change my training philosophy up of like more strength training and strengthening my knees and hips. And then uh, kind of like 60 to 70 miles, which is still a good amount. And then just really, really cranking hard on my workouts. But then, so I uh, had a pre pretty decent cross country season senior year. Um, and then I came back from winter break and I was like, my calf was hurting me. And then the first day on campus, I didn't really train over winter break because my calf and the first day on campus, I was like, okay, I think it's my shins. And so I told my coach, like my shins hurting me and, uh, which my shins hurting me. And he was like, all right, we'll go, we'll go get you an x-ray. And I was going to the x-ray when you're looking for a stress fracture and stress fractures, you just don't show up in x-rays. And then, so I'm like thinking like, oh, it's just going to be something silly. And they're going to be like, all right, get an MRI. And it's just going to be this big, long process. And I go get the x-ray and the doctor walked in and he showed me the x-ray. And you could distinctly see two cracks in my shin Oof. on the x-ray. And I was like, he just, he like just showed it to me. And like, he didn't even say anything. It was that clear. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, and I went to my car and I honestly, like I cried in my car. I was so upset because I, I knew like, I was so fit before that, like after cross country season, we took two weeks off and then uh, I came back and we just like were doing runs and we did like one workout and it was like a four mile tempo and I was running five flat pace in the track. And like even my teammates were like, dude, you were really fit. And I was like, I felt like I was really ready to make that jump. But uh, so yeah, after that, like I immediately got on the bike and I just kind of embraced that mental grind. Like I was grinding so hard that like I could feel my, mental i could feel like i was losing my mind like i was waking up in the morning i was swimming like two miles and then i go at practice time i would bike an hour and i was I, I got to a point where i was swimming like 10 miles a week with like nine hours in the bike a week nine to ten hours and so like i mean i was going hard on the bike like every time the swims were easier and but the bike was just like constant go mode and so I mean, right when I got, right when I was able to run, season got canceled. But like looking back on it, I'm just glad I went through that mental grind because I feel like I just, I needed to get into that like kind of zero dark 30 where I took two months with just like 
nothing but hammer in this cross training. Yeah. And when I'm back running. It's like something I appreciate so much more. And I ha- if I feel like it elevated my uh, my mentality. So. Yeah. No. I, pretty. It's kind of like it's kind of like everyone right now. We're like obviously like you said like not being able to run and grinding like going into that zero dark thirty mentality and grinding on cross training made you like appreciate like actually being able to run which I feel like we're, everyone's on the same boat right now with this whole Corona thing where like, like we love racing and like racing being taken away from us is making us like, like, damn, like we like, sometimes like you take it for granted when you race and not like you complain at races or like after races and stuff like that. And now everyone's like, damn, like I wish I could race type of thing. But talking about racing, uh, rally relays was, when was this, was this sophomore or junior year? Uh, junior year, but I was redshirting. So yeah, so so was, you redshirted junior year outdoors. You go to rally relays. You dropped a you drop a fourteen oh one, which fourteen oh four, which you look forward to a couple months later. And our boy Noah makes it to nationals, for, <laughs> runs fourteen oh one. Like you kind of look at that uh, regionals meet, and you you see it took like fourteen oh one to fourteen oh two range to make it out of nationals. Did you feel some type of way knowing that you were like, damn, like. I'm in that same region. I was in. I'm. I knew. I, I'm. I know. I'm in that kind of shape where I could have probably like ran, ran fourteen oh one, fourteen flat, and maybe made it to nationals. Did, did it make you feel some type of way that you were red shirting? Yeah, it was weird because I mean, if you look at the splits of what they ran, it's almost like exactly the, my splits at Raleigh. Like it's to a T. Maybe like I mean, there's it was like two seconds faster than what I ran was the qualifying time. So it was like there were like lap four and five for a second faster than mine, but it was almost like exactly across the board that I ran. And so I was still with my coach. I was like, what the, that is crazy. Like, I feel like I could have done that, but I mean, looking, obviously not having the hindsight back then, but I was like, I have two more years left to do it. So I wasn't too upset. I was kind of happy that I did it so I could come back for a fifth year. Yeah. I got the PR in. So I wasn't too upset, but, uh, Noah actually ran his PR um, at Florida. Of Florida, that same that same weekend, right? It was the day before. Yeah, he ran it the day. Be- I remember because he ran it the day before, and we're all like, you know, all the boys we we hype each other. We're like, damn, like no really snap. And then like the next day, it's like, yo, Avery snapped too. Like holy shit, we're like all the boys snapping. It was crazy. Yeah, and that was my first time breaking fourteen thirty. Yeah, and that's then, insane. Uh, yeah, and Noah DM me afterwards. He's like, dude, you trying to steal my thunder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, dude. It's no, that's the thing. That's the beauty. It's like everyone's so cool with each other. Like, there's like I said, there's not mutual respect. Where it's like, dude, like I did it, you did it. Like, there's that respect. Just because you, just because like, I, I, I mean, Noah, Noah ran fourteen, fourteen O's. You ran fourteen O's. Like, no one knows the type of grind it takes to run that time. So he like he has that respect for you. He's like, damn, like he, I know that boy's grinding because that, that's not an easy like feat to like to like achieve. Yeah, no, that's exactly how it is. Cause like at this stage, we're not really trying to compete against each other. Like there's bigger, there's bigger things to do, and so we're all trying to kind of elevate our names and get on that next level. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, I love, I love when I check results and I see like some of my boys from Florida or back home running crazy times, and because we're always texting each other, and I know, like. I know when I run well, like I know I'm going to get a text from at least five people. Yeah. So that, so that kind of keeps it going, and it's pretty cool to have like, people on your side. It's almost like teammates. Yeah. That are, were, like, that aren't even close to, like, teammates just texting back and forth. So Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's the same way I feel. It's like, like, I feel, I mean, I, I you know, like, I always got mass support for all the boys. Like, even when, when you ran that 1401, like, you already know I'm, like, texting you, posting on Twitter, like, yo, that's my boy. So, like. I feel like, I, and then you appreciate it when it gets reciprocated back. Because when I just recently, this past outdoor around fourteen thirty-five, like the amount of love and like support I got from like you boys, like you, Bobo, Rob, like all those boys who like I like been supporting for years, like just because I mean you guys were are like way faster than me, and like I'm the type of person who's like, damn dude, like I look up to those guys, like hopefully one day I can run that fast, like those guys are like the fact the fact that they're like that like fast and like they fuck with me, like. I love it. Like, it's like that mutual respect. So, like, when I was a, when I had my breakthrough race and, like, you boys were texting me, like, it meant so much to me. It's like, damn, bro, like, that's real. Yeah, and then you you actually, you FaceTime me on your cool down. I, I was like, Jan's FaceTime me. I was like, oh, I think, I think they had a race day. And then you were like, bro, I just ran 1430-something. And you were dude, freaking out. Dude, I was, was so, so hyped. Like, yeah, it was like, it brought me back to my moment at Raleigh and how cool 
cool that felt and it's like knowing you were going through that same experience yeah I was like, that is that is so cool i knew you were on cloud nine and like just seeing your boys like that is it's like that's the best feeling ever so let me ask you what, what what's been your reaction obviously first outdoor gets canceled now so gone just recently announced fall is kind of postponed they say postponed but like i don't know when they're post postponed. postponed till 2021 <laughs> fall like yeah. There's not gonna be no no cross season in the spring, like that's dumb. So what has what has been your reaction to like those kind of announcements due to COVID? Yeah, I mean, so outdoor getting canceled, like I was hoping that I could make it to regionals, but now I'm like, I I know that I I did what I needed to do. I cross trained that whole entire semester. Like I went through that mental grind, and so I was like, all right, I'm able to relax. I put in the work, but then I don't even have a cross country season this year. So, like, I wasn't – I'm ups, I'm disappointed for my teammates, obviously. Mm -hmm. and some of them are pretty fit. But other than that, I'm like, well, you know, I try and, like, look at the positive side. And, like, I have I have all this time to train, get ready for possibly indoor. But uh, it's pretty cool because now, like – I mean, now my teammates are going to be able to train with me. We're going to be able to do time trials and stuff. So, like, yeah, it should be pretty cool to have, like, that whole team mentality, whether we're able to meet consistently for practice or not. Yeah, that's the kind of way I look, I'm look. i looking at it, too. Like, obviously, when it first happened, it kind of stung. Just because, like, I mean, at least for me, like, outdoor season was, like, I had started off so well, like, just my, mm -hmm. the times I was running. So, I, like, it was, like, it was, like, the first year, too, where, like, I had, like, a good enough time to qualify for, for Florida Relay, for the Florida Relays 5K. So, like, I was kind of excited for that because I was, like, man, like, all I have to do is go out there, Florida Relays, and there'll be, like, five to ten guys who, like, can run, like, 1430s are faster so I just kind of got to like hang on in that on the back of that pack and like let them let them take me so I was like really looking forward to that and then like season gets canceled so I, at first I was like damn like this freaking sucks dude like I'm so fit like I, I know I have so much more to give which which is kind of what prompted me to like decide to do my fifth year because at first I was kind of I was I was pretty content with like my career I was like man like I did all that I could like I have my fun. I, I ran what I ran. Like, I'm happy with it. I'm ready to move on. But then COVID, like, kind of ending me on, like, when I was, like, on a rise, kind of was like, oh, man, like, no, nah, I, I know I have more to give. Like, I want to I wanna give myself a shot. So then, you know, got my shot at UT. So I'm going there. And, like, like you said, just I look at it as, like, yeah, like, I didn't have a cross the season either just because I, I was out of an elig in eligibility. But I was gonna like maybe run run a couple races on attached, but obviously there there might be no races happening this fall. So like you said, just the team aspect, just being able for me is like being able to train with a new team, new teammates, new city, new environment. Like coach already said, we'll do a couple time trials. So like just kind of like enjoying training at the moment, and just having fun, and like you said, get ready for a possibility in the spring to like yeah. just do what do what we're ready to do because I feel like we're all ready we're all ready to go so we're just waiting for, once the opportunity gets gets there and we get the opportunity to race i feel like all the boys are ready to snap yeah i mean i'm i kind of feel excited i'm excited to kind of get this like training going i'm excited to have this block where i don't have to worry about running fast and racing like we i have this block where it, it doesn't have to be too serious and i have like a ridiculous amount of time to get in shape and i can just enjoy my training and plus i mean coronavirus is extending our eligibility clock so I yeah wait for a sixth year yeah i mean i might be on my byu my byu grind i might be able to <laughs> go to grad school and uh and get get some of that help hopefully get some of that paid for but i mean more importantly get be able to compete and if indoor gets canceled this year then i'll have i mean i'll have indoor outdoor for a six year so yeah be pretty sweet yeah so let's let's talk about something other than running Let's talk. Let's talk NBA. I mean, currently we're missing the we're missing the Bucks Magic game, which I was kind of fine with because I felt I felt like it was gonna be a blow. I haven't checked the score, but I mean, I felt like it was gonna be like like that Raptors next game where like that was a complete blowout. But I mean, we start we recently started a chat. If anybody listens to this episode and wants to join our NBA chat, it's called Bubble Talk. Is currently is me, A. Brad, Bubble, and Carlin. We're big NBA fans. We love talking NBA. So I want to I want to ask you NBA awards real quick. You know what they are. You got just for the for the for the season. You got coach of the year, rookie of the year, six man of the year, defensive player of the year and MVP. What are your picks? 
Um, most improved, I would put, actually, I'm gonna start with MVP. MVP, I think, I would, I would love to give it to LeBron, but I feel like LeBron is just like, I feel like, I was, I was surprised how good the Lakers were in the regular season. Like, they are dangerous. Yeah. They were, they were number one in the West, and they just full of vets. And LeBron usually doesn't even, like, I feel like people, every regular season, LeBron, like, will play, like, pretty good. And people are like, oh, he's losing his touch. It's like, what are you talking about? He's about to destroy everyone in the playoffs. <laughs> like, through the, he ran through the East every year. But, I mean, just because of, like, how the regular season played out, I think Giannis will probably get it. Just yeah. Because it had a really good record, and he was putting up stats. So I think Giannis will probably get MVP. Um, but I think LeBron's still the best player in the league. Uh, six man, gosh, I haven't paid. I haven't paid too much attention to like. I don't know the stats on it, but it'll probably go. I mean, it'll probably go Lou Will. I think. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. And then most improved. I know. Uh, I was thinking Brandon Ingram probably get that. Yep. Um, rookie of the year, John Morant. People yeah, are trying to that's, pretend like yeah, people who are trying to argue Zion are dumb, bro. Like Zion only <laughs> played twenty games, bro. Like John, John I mean, I know he I know I know they ended up losing the eighth seed and they didn't make it to the playoffs, but Job pretty much carried his team in the West, dude. The West is so stacked. Like he carried his team all the way to the eighth seed and unfortunately lost it, but like he lost it to the Blazers and Damian Lillard, who in the bubble was ridiculous, bro. Like this man was something else in the bubble. Yeah. John, I mean, John Morant went from playing mid-major teams to, like, being an absolute stud. So, I mean, that's good year. And then uh, coach of the year, dude, uh, Nick Nurse. That's yep. my coach of the year. I, I agree. I, I honestly, I, I, will, I will admit that as soon as Kawhi left, I was like, the Raptors are done. Like, they'll probably, they'll probably be, like, a six, seven seed in the East just because it's the East. And, like, People are always like, oh, the East is kind of weak. But the, the way they're playing, like, their team defense is ridiculous. Like, it's, they're playing, like, out of their mind. And honestly, I would not be surprised if they make it out of the East this year again, which would be yeah, insane. I, I, Raptors are definitely my sleeper team. They, I, I think I saw yesterday in one of the games, they were saying, like, if Raptors make it out all the way to the finals, they'll be only the second team ever in NBA history to make it back to the finals after losing their lead scorer and finals MVP the year before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ex exactly. Raptors, I mean, they play team basketball. And uh, Fred Van Fleet, dude, he's just dude. He's cold -blooded. I feel like every time there's a momentum shift and then Fred Van, Fred Van Fleet gets a shot and you're like, it's almost like one of those where in the back of your mind, you're like, man, they need to make this. It's, it's like every time. It yeah, he's like, it's like the Raptors, the Raptors really need that shot and then Fred Van Fleet just comes through every time, <laughs> I swear. Whenever they need something, Fred Van Fleet will just be like four feet out, and like whether it's like shot clock running out, launching one up, like or him getting an open shot, he just rips the net, and you're just like, how does he do it every time? But I mean, if they're gonna go far, he needs to he needs to keep that up. Yeah, no, I agree. So then, what's the oh defensive player of the year? Defensive player of the year. Uh, I mean, it's probably gonna be Giannis. I would think. You think so? I I, I haven't paid too much attention. Like I didn't pay. Right, I, I feel always, like. Right now, it's like the talk is between Giannis and, oh. and Anthony Davis. If Giannis, yeah. if Giannis wins MVP and Defensive Player of the Year and can somehow get the Bucks to the finals, that would be quite the season. Yeah, that'd be impressive. I, uh, the problem with me, like, choosing the awards is I really don't start paying attention until, like, pretty close to the playoffs. Yeah. The playoff. I follow, like, stats kind of. But, like, no, I feel that. I don't want to sit down and watch a basketball game for two and a half hours when you're 20 games into the season. Like, yeah, no, I, game, but I'm not really following it. Yeah, I, I agree too. Like, I watch like big matchup games, like when there's like like star studded games, but like, like obviously, like when the Lakers and Clippers play, I'm always watching, like stuff like that. But like, I mean, we're, we're busy with school, so it's kind of like hard, especially, especially those West Coast games, dude. Like, they'd be so late. It'd be like starting at like 10 30. I'm like, bro, like, I got practice and class tomorrow. Like, I can't. I'm not saying up to one to watch basketball. I'll catch the highlights on Sports Center the next day or something. Yeah, exactly. Like I'll scroll through Twitter. I'll see. I'll see who got dunked on. I'll see. Yeah. Who, <laughs> yeah. Dribbled, I'll see who dribbled between whose legs. Like exactly. So I'm pretty much just like Twitter following through the first half of the season. But then, like obviously, it got canceled. But I've been keeping up with the bubble. I've been having. Oh, dude, the bubble's been. It's been great. I'm so glad. Like, 
they've been they were able to figure that out, work it out, and like give us some sports to watch. So, who do you who do you got coming out of the West, and who do you got coming out of the East? I got I got the Lakers coming out of the West. Um, I got Ray, Lakers Raptors. That's, and that's that'll be that'll be a, that'll be crazy. That'll be a crazy matchup. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of rooting for the Clippers, but I just I don't see LeBron losing. I feel like every year people are gonna say. I said I said in the chat, man, that game last night between the Clippers and Dallas was crazy. Dallas is gonna beat the Clippers in six or seven <laughs> games. I, I'm gonna say if they, if Christmas Porzingis didn't get ejected last night, they would have stole Game One, and that would have completely changed the series. Unfortunately, yeah. he got ejected. Luka tried to do everything he can, but you know he he couldn't he couldn't get Paul George came through last minute with that clutch three honestly, but it was a good game. I mean, there's some good games on today. I'm excited. And it's it's interesting to see a seven game series with no home court advantage. Exactly. It's, so it is the weirdest thing ever because usually it's like okay, well the home team's gonna win game one, and then it's like if you win one of the first two, it's a com- we, it's a completely different. Yeah, it's always like it's always like oh, if you if you still want if you still want on the road, you like switch like completely shift the series, like switch the momentum. But like now, it's like there is no road games, there is no home games. So like, like who really is the home team? Yeah, it's 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 so different. Like I'm sure like it's been like a huge adjustment for for the players, and like it's kind of like like analysts keep saying it's like you don't have your home fans like screaming and being loud. You kind of like got to create your own energy, and you got to bring it every day because if you don't bring it. You can't rely on like maybe you're sluggish, like oh the fans are cheering me on, like I'm I gotta do this for the fans. Like there's literally no one screaming. Like all you hear is like each other like talking on the floor and like the refs and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's just dudes hooping. That's what I honestly kind of like it better. Like it's, yeah, yeah, just like people they're just going at it. Like there's no outside factors. So it's just like they're just going for it's it. It's like they just pulled up to like an LA fitness gym and like. <laughs> no. The best, the best ten guys on on the gym just hopped on the floor and and said, "Let's run it." Yeah, no, for real. It's like you see, uh, like you see those summer pickup games they do. Yes, like, what it feels like. Literally, yeah, that's what it look. That's literally what it looks like. So yeah, man, I w- I want to talk to you about one more thing before we leave. We didn't talk about it when we talked about the chat, but we we used to get into some pretty pretty like heavy freestyle battles, some rap battles, yeah. dude. Talk you, I low key you got masculine. I mean, I remember, I remember Warrior Camp. I don't was it like my senior after my senior year of high school. I think it was. We were like parked at the bowling alley before we went in with all the kids, and we just threw in a beat, and you just completely like murdered the beat, like off the dome. I was like, yo, like what the heck, bro? Like this kid, like how did you pick up freestyle? Because you actually, you actually good at it. Like no cap. It's funny because it's like. I'm a dude who has, like, I have no rhythm. Like, I, I have no rhythm. I can't dance. But it's, like, I've always been kind of, like, creative in, in those kinds of ways, though. So, like, it's something I always, like, I always loved. Like, I was, I was that kid, like, in his hoodie, like, hood up, walking to the bus stop. But, like, I like, had Eminem recovery in my speakers. <laughs> like, thinking I was, like, some hard-ass kid, little kid walking to the bus stop. And I was, like, 12 years old. But, like, and, like, I used to, like, write raps down, like, when, when I was bored in class. And so, like, I've always been clever. And then, uh, but, I mean, that shit was on once Joel dropped that freestyle. Because, like, group chat, like, real cocky. Like, I was like, yeah, I mean, I just won state. Like, I, like, I was just, like, kind of talking shit. And Joel, like, it was, like, day one. He just wasn't having any of it. Like, he was like, who the fuck is this kid coming in? <laughs> like, one thing is, I always like to talk shit. But one thing I appreciate is when someone, like, really, like, really gets me and burns me. Like, I just think that's so funny. Like, yeah, I, you know, I mean, it was out of nowhere. He just, like, dropped this minute-and-a-half long verse, just, like, destroying me. And he kind of shit on me, too. Like, it was, <laughs> it was like, well done. And really? I, like, I my brother, like, I showed my mom. I was like, yo, this kid just fucked me up. <laughs> Dude, it was so funny. We went through, like, a phase where it was, like, bro, I was, like, I swear, like, I, I was so glad I was, like, already committed because we went through a phase where, like, that chat was, like, literally, like, everything we would do like I remember being in class like I would not even pay attention to class and I would be in the chat and like it would be times where like if I if I was taking a test in class I put down my phone I come back and there's like 170 messages or something like that and, and we you went through like you know, all of them. we went through like that week phase where it was like bro straight rap battles like we would send videos like we were dropping tracks on like SoundCloud like I remember like I dropped a couple of tracks on SoundCloud Robin Walker drops one drop one on SoundCloud like we were just going at each other and then afterwards it was like a whole like joke and we would laugh about it and, like 
I, it's funny because it still comes up like every now and then we're like yo remember when we did that rap battle and like someone's always like bro let's find the videos let's find the videos and it's so hard to find them now because it's like they're so old bro they're like ancient like like an hour and a half and find them <laughs> yeah dude like i'll tell my kids when they like yeah dude like we used to rap battle hard bro <laughs> Here's the videos. Don't worry. There ain't there no more. No, just know. Of it. Yeah, just know mine. Just know mine was kind of fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you definitely have one of the yeah. best ones. Yeah. You, I failed physics my senior year. I got an F in the fourth quarter of physics in the, the last semester because I legit didn't pay attention to a single thing. I bro. was just talking shit to you guys the whole entire time. Hey, disclaimer, we're good students now. We get straight A's only. Like, that was just back in high school when we were booling, but. Yeah, that was, that was post, that was post-commitment already. Yeah, that was post-commitment. Like, we already signed papers. Like, there's no going back. We are like, we're, we're invested in our group chat. It was, in, it was, bro, <laughs> like, not only, not only Faga game, but, like, remember, remember that Elite Runners of Florida? Like, that was another group chat that, like, popped up out of nowhere. And it was like. Bro, it was like 30 people, bro. It was like all the Miami boys, like the Faga game people. Like there was like girls in the group. So like there was like Chrissy Gear, like Raphael Givens, like bro, St. Clair Johnson. Like it was like crazy, dude. It was like a time. I don't even know. Like I like we talked about it like when, when I visited you like a couple like a couple months ago early in the summer. Like it's crazy because like when you look back, like in the running community, there was definitely that mutual respect and com- camaraderie between runners before us. Like I'm talking about, like, Jack Guy and, like, Nick Diaz. Like, all those, like, guys are, like, were, like, competitors and, like, will always race each other and, like, go head to head. Like, they have that mutual respect. Like, oh, like, I'll clap you up after a race. But, like, I feel like we started something where it was, like, we would, like, go into races and we literally, like, we would race each other, like, every week, like, every other week. But, like, once we got off the track, once we got off the course, we were, like, mad friendly, like, super tight. Like, we would talk to each other. We would, like, joke around, talk mad shit. And, like, I feel like you see a lot more now from the from when I and we always joke like oh we really started that because you see it now like kids from like different colleges different schools like kind of like team up and like train together like hang out together all the time and stuff like that which is kind of dope to see because like it's good I feel like it grows the sport and I feel like I mean I pride myself in saying that like we definitely like can definitely say like we're one of the people one of the one of the groups that kind of started that like tight camaraderie like hanging out outside of running like stuff like that and being like good friends outside of running yeah i mean you would see people like that were like let's say like someone's from tampa or like i was friends with the the, uh the fort myers guys because we we lived like close to each other but like other than that you remember talking to someone from sarasota like you didn't see that kind of stuff but my that second half of senior year was so fun like every time i went to a track meet i knew like there were going to be there were going to be people there that were like hyping me up and I was going to be hyping people up and it was like yeah it was like it was nothing but love everywhere we went and so that's why I was like it was crazy I loved it and then I mean yeah and then like now you see like Ben Hart Vixen like he is telling me like all all these people like in a group chat with him and I'm yeah. like that, I, yeah. it feels so crazy because I mean like then he saw I mean he saw how it was how it went my senior year because he was a freshman at that point at Sarasota. And then it was like for like them to kind of like kind of take over the reins once we graduated. Yeah. No. And then that, that elite runners chat. I feel like if we look back at that, there would be some like kind of crazy accolades going through the list of like who was in it. I mean, we had oh, tires yeah. for a while. I know. I remember <laughs> that, dude. That was crazy. I was like, we had like everyone. I feel like everyone in Florida was in that in that group chat at one point. Like Trevor Foley. Like there was so many. Like there was just so many. I mean. You remember when that, that fake Trevor Foley Twitter popped up? Like, there were so many things that happened senior year that were, like, so funny, dude. Like, it was so much fun, dude. Like, <laughs> it was just genuine genuine fun, dude. Like, just guys from, like, different parts of the state, different schools. Like, guys who, like, competed against each other almost every week just having fun outside of running. And it even led on to, like, the summer, too, because we would link up on the, in, over the summer, like, multiple times. Like, we would hang out. I mean, I remember, like, it was to the point, like, you and Joel went to, like, a concert and, like, stayed at Rob's house with Rob's yeah. parents, and Rob wasn't even home. Like, it was, yeah. like, it was like that, that close. Uh, that's how tight we got. Yeah, we, me and Joel, like, we both agree. We had way more fun at Rob's house hanging out <laughs> with his parents than we did at the Camp the Rapper concert. Like, oh, we dude, went and his saw parents a chance were, at, like, His parents were so much fun. Yeah, his parents are so cool. And, like, I stayed at his house multiple times without him being there. Like, 
I'll literally be like, Hey, I'm coming through Tampa. Like, could I, could I stop by and like have a place to sleep? And it's yeah. like no second, no text. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's just, it's just nice. Like, and even, and even like to this day too, like now that we're in college, like we still compete against each other. Like we probably don't see each other as, as often as we did in high school, but we still see each other like here and there. And it's still the same way. It's like, yo, like, and that's why I like, I love regionals. Cause like, that's when I get to see all the boys, like regionals, you pull up and it's like, all the boys are there. Like we're all racing. Like we're all having fun. Like you like, you like run, you'll run past one of the boys like in the middle of 10K and you're like slap him in the butt. Like, yo, come on, bro. What you doing? Yeah. You slagging. Let's go. <laughs> I did that to you. I remember. Yes, no, dude. Crazy, Cause I was literally just about to say like, I love regionals every year, even though I usually didn't run well. Like I only had one good region. Yeah. Regional race. But like, I loved it. Cause I would always get so jealous seeing all the guys still in Florida. Like yeah. they would go to like FSU or something and they see each other. But regionals is like, I'm in Tennessee. So like regionals is the one, one meet a year I can like I know I'm gonna see all the guys and I just I mean I just remember funny stuff like I remember uh uh Gio Argio was like when he was he's was coaching y'all and like I'm just hearing like Carleen Carleen <laughs> he's yelling at Carlin I'm like, I can't let Carlin beat me no <laughs> like with my boys and then like I remember my freshman year we were like two miles into the race and I looked to my right and Carlin's right next to me and Noah Perkins is like right we were literally a, a tight triangle, like a triangle yeah. in the middle of like a million people and we're like working together and so then like seeing all that is crazy and like you always you see the boys like you'll be moving up and then like all of a sudden you're like oh there's jack up there like yeah oh, rob there's noah there's jan there's carlin like seeing all the guys like that is pretty cool like it's like it, it takes me back to like my high school days and i'm like mid-race and i'm like thinking like oh this is awesome <laughs> yeah no it's dope like i mean i even remember like the past like Two years at regionals, we we always we stayed in, we somehow we stayed in the same hotel. The year we there was in Alabama, we were in the same hotel, and then the my junior year when it was in FSU, we were in the same hotel. Yeah, and we went to that hotel last year, which is which is funny. We went to that hotel in Tallahassee, and I like walked in, and I, uh, I turned the corner, and I was like, "Oh, dude, this is the hotel we're at." And then one of my one of my buddies was like, "Yo, this is where you saw your friend that runs for FGCU," and I, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "That's crazy," and I feel like. What's funny is because, like, even, like, my teammates now, like, they notice that. Like, I feel like they seem – like, they're probably like, what the hell? Because it seems like every time I'm in Florida, like, they like they see me, like, every person I walk every, by, yo, what's up, bro? And it's not – and, like, they're like, oh, you, they think – I feel like they think I'm, like, just super popular back yeah. in Florida. But it's not even, like – it's, like, everyone was popular. It's, like, we were all friends with each other. Yeah. And so, like, they're always like, what the hell? Because I feel like Tennessee – I mean, they were friends with each other, but – it was nowhere near like it like it was in, uh, when we were in high school. Yeah, no. All right, so to close out, I want to do a quick Q and A. Speed speed questions. I'll just shoot you with some questions, and you give me your answers. You ready? All right, let's let's go. All right, favorite trainers to train with? Uh, Hoka Clifton's. All right, favorite rapper? Favorite rapper? Uh, J Cole. Are you? Do you prefer running in the morning or running at night? Morning. Of uh, favorite race distance, uh, fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Ooh, I yeah. like it. All right. Uh, biggest pet peeve. One of your biggest pet peeves. One of my biggest pet peeves. Oh God. Um, like a running one or just like a normal one? Just like any in general pet peeves. Uh, shit. These supposed to be quick questions. I'm messing it up. Uh, to do do. I don't like I don't like when people like disrespect how fast the time is. Like when someone would just be like, "Oh yeah, I think I can break 14." When it's like, like they have like their PR is like fifteen twenty. Yeah. Like, I hate when people just like casually say stuff like they're gonna do something crazy, and it's like you like have a little more respect for the sport. Like yeah, it's yeah. so hard to do some things. Like you don't see me like, "Well, oh, I'm just gonna go to the trials next year." Like yeah. <laughs> no, I and feel that people play it off like it's like. Uh, like it's like oh you just got to think big but it's like you kind of got to be realistic or else you're just setting yourself up for failure yeah 100 all right what's what, what would you say it's like your go-to restaurant go-to restaurant uh in johnson city it's barbs it's like barbs? This, uh, barberitos it's this burrito place burritos and chips Bad. If, I'm, if i'm ever in johnson city i'll check it out oh, yeah, right. last there. last question if if it was an etsu and you could have gone to any school in florida what school would you have gone to 
North Florida, no doubt. North about Florida, that. swoop. I love those boys. Yeah, I love <laughs> swoop. I Dude, love, those, I love boys. those boys. Yeah, Coach Pig is awesome. I really respect Dude. the program. Yeah, no, I got my respect for those boys. My respect for Coach Pig. I wanted to go there for my fifth year, but it didn't work out. But you know, mm -hmm. everything happens for a reason. But yeah, my respect for those boys up there. Super, super dope team. Super dope program. Mm -hmm. And there you have it, guys. Thank you for being on here, bro. I really appreciate you. I got mad love for you. I hope Good I get rock. to see you soon. Yeah, dude, traveling. Hey, when you run out of guests, just know I'm always ready for round two. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you, and thank you for your time, man. <laughs> bro, thank you. Much love, man.